Today, we're thrilled to be speaking with one of the foremost experts in NAD Plus research, Dr. Charles Brenner. Charles is Professor and Chair at the Department of Diabetes and Cancer in City of Hope Hospital in Los Angeles. He's also the Chief Scientific Advisor at Chromadex. Now, Charles is widely known for his discovery of NR as a precursor to NAD+, a key molecule in cellular health and aging. And at Longevity Technology, we're excited to be launching our new longevity supplement, which features Niagen, Chromadex's patented NR ingredient at the heart of its formula. So let's take a deep dive into the science behind NR, NAD+, with the expert. Charles, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you, Charles. And of course, uh, we're very proud to have uh, Niagen as part of our uh, longevity stack. It's a hero ingredient. Um, what do you feel about the partnership between our two organizations? Well, it's great. I'm, I'm happy that uh, you're going to be playing a role in educating the, the, the public about how important NAD is, how NAD comes under attack in conditions of metabolic stress and that Niagen, uh, the patented NR, is the safe way to boost NAD and be resilient to those conditions of metabolic stress. So that's great, Charles. And of course, you know, we're, we're very excited to have this partnership in place now. Um, how do you see Niagen enhancing you know, the broader goals of promoting healthy aging? Well, you know, one of the things that, that we've discovered over, over the years is that um, Robust physical exercise can help maintain NAD, um, but some of the um, other things that we enjoy doing, like being out in, in the air, um, you know, enjoying sunlight, um, even being, you know, in an environment with loud music, some of the food and drink in excess, things can attack the NAD system. So right. I, I sometimes ask people, how many people would love to hop on a flight to Ibiza and, you know, be out on a beach in the, in the sunshine, listening to loud music, drinking red wine and, and eating into the wee hours of the day of the yeah. night. And actually all of those things can disrupt, disrupt one's NAD system. So right. um, now there are um, seven or eight um, human studies showing that NR has anti-inflammatory activity in people and so we really think that this is a very important ingredient for healthy aging. Yeah. And of course, Charles, you, you discovered NR as a precursor to NAD+. Can you maybe share the story behind that? Because it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some, some stories behind it. Well, you know, I was just minding my own business, working on an enzyme. That's what biochemists do. Um, there was an enzyme I was interested in called glutamine-dependent NAD synthetase. It has two active sites. I wanted to figure out how they, they talk to each other. And as I looked at the wiring diagram of how eukaryotic cells like yeast cells or human cells make their NAD, um, there were all of these arrows suggesting that people understood all of the pathways and, and the precursors. There's a pathway from tryptophan. There's a pathway from nicotinic acid, niacin, and a pathway from nicotinamide. And I used my system to question the received wisdom of whether those were the only ways of making NAD. And it was in the course of those experiments that we discovered the NR pathway and uh, the activity of nicotinamide riboside kinases. Those are actually quite interesting genes because many of the conditions in which NAD comes under attack, particularly in heart and nerve, um, when the NAD system comes under attack, the nicotinamide riboside kinase genes become upregulated. So there's really a very distinct use case for NR is that when tissues are under attack and they need a boost in their NAD system, they're actually looking for NR. And we know that from the expression of the NR kinase genes that, that comes up upregulated. Okay, so how does NR really affect aging and, and cellular health? I mean, to sort of you know, to take it back to the basics for us. Well, the basics are that there are four NAD coenzymes that allow us to convert everything that we eat into everything that we are and everything that we do. So right. they convert food into energy. They, in mitochondria, you generate ATP through 
an NADH, NAD plus react set of reactions. And then we make all of the compounds in our, in our cells and all of the connecting uh, tissue compounds. So when, you know, when, we, when we eat stuff, it gets broken down like a chop shop in, in, in our cells and used to manufacture things. So we make our own protein, we make our own RNA and DNA, we repair DNA in a process that depends on NAD. Um, we detoxify free radicals with NADPH. We make steroid hormones with NADPH. And many of these systems decline in aging along with a decline in NAD plus, NADPH, and the two other NAD coenzymes. So bringing all of this together supports healthy aging. And is there a tipping point from an age perspective when you start to see the drop off of NAD plus? That's actually hard to answer because, you know, we don't have people donating their brains and tissues, right? So we have access to some human liver samples from alcoholics that show that the liver NAD system is quite damaged in, in alcoholics. We have lots of data uh, from blood. We have some data from skin. And it seems as though the tissue NAD uh, declines in, in, in many different systems. Um, and it may also be episodic. So it may not be just um, like a clock um, declining a certain amount or percent every year, but more of a function of episodes of inflammation or episodes of sunburn or episodes of uh, other conditions that attack the NAD system. Right. Got it. Now, Charles, obviously there's this ongoing debate about the benefits of NR versus NMN for, for boosting NAD+. What's the current scientific consensus on this? Why do you believe NR is the superior choice for uh, supporting well, health span? Well, NMN can't get into cells. So, you know, people have been taking NMN or stuff that is labeled as NMN in order to boost their NAD. But it's very clear from the scientific literature that the difference between the two compounds, which is a phosphate group, that phosphate group has to come off before it gets into cells. So people are essentially going to the trouble of having a chemist or some type of industrial process put the phosphate on in order for cellular metabolism and physiology to take the phosphate off and, and then deliver NR. But the, right. the, the other issue is safety. And it's not clear that there is a safe form of NMN that is for sale. Um, it, NMN is being tested as a drug in the United States. And so there's an FDA ruling that says things that are being tested as a drug can't be available as a supplement unless they were approved as a supplement first. Mm -hmm. That was the case for nicotinamide riboside. So Chromadex, um, you know, licensed that technology that I developed at Dartmouth and developed a process for scaled up synthesis. And we did toxicology testing and human clinical testing. And, um, and then the, got two designations from the FDA. One is called new dietary ingredient notification and the other is called generally regarded as safe. And then after NR as Niagen, Chromadex's product, was approved for sale as a supplement, then people said, you know what, this could be really useful in drug indications. If you look mm -hmm. at, you know, yeah. the mouse literature, this could be useful for heart failure. This could be useful for neurodegeneration. This could be useful for um, inflammation, coronary artery disease, and Parkinson's, all of which, as you know, there are ongoing clinical trials. And um, so at that point, it's approved as a supplement and being tested as a drug. In the case mm -hmm. of NMN, because the company that had a patent on a crystal form put it into drug testing first, it can't be available as a supplement. So anyone that's selling as a, as a supplement is sort of doing so in the face of the safety process. And we don't know what consumers are being exposed to. 
Yeah, no, absolutely, Charles. And I, I guess it's quite interesting you refer to some of this work that's happening in, in clinical research. And I was at a conference only earlier on in this year about the, uh, the tipping point between a supplement and, and perhaps moving into therapeutic application. So, you know, as you, as you mentioned, you've got lots of great research going on. I mean, maybe could you just explain a little bit about what you're excited about, what's happening in the, in the lab, what's happening in the clinic yeah. now? Yeah. With NMD well, Plus? I think. You know, at this point, we're, you know, we're 20 in, 20 years into um, use of nicotinamide riboside in, in model systems and um, 10 plus years in, in, in people. So we should really emphasize the human, uh, you know, research. And, and so it's seven or eight uh, published clinical trials in which um, NR has shown anti-inflammatory activity. There was a positive trial um, for people with peripheral artery disease, in which the primary endpoint was an improvement in walking speed versus the placebo. Uh, these people are not super well. So in the course of doing the trial, taking placebo, people's walking speed got worse. Uh, but in the NR arm, the walking speed got better. I mean, that was a really um, very impressive result. And there are some trials um, on Parkinson's that are being done in Norway in which NR was so positive that the Norwegian government came in and made sure that all of the participants, whether they were on the, the NR arm or the placebo arm, had access to niagen to improve their quality of life in the future. So there are larger trials now uh, being done. I'm excited. Uh, about cognitive impairment, neuroprotection, and I would love to see um, a skin healing trial and a fatty liver trial as well. Exciting times, Charles. Now, I guess obviously um, th there is much that we could be talking about, but in, in terms of when I spoke with uh, Rob Fried, the CEO of Chromadex, mm -hmm. he was kind of referring a lot to what's happening in the space with GLP ones and how everybody's getting super excited about you know, you know the weight loss drugs and so on. And he was giving me a very strong indication that he felt that really niagen was one of these really uh, quite unexplored and very exciting molecules that's out there in the marketplace. It is. And, you know, you want people that are experiencing, you know, weight loss to enter a world of sustained physical activity in order to maintain their skeletal muscle mass and fun function. And so that's a really a great use case for, for Niagen. Um, we don't think that as a solo ingredient, you know, it's going to... Um, allow people to achieve weight loss in the way that a GLP-1 receptor uh, agonist does. But in terms of promoting a healthy lifestyle and uh, promoting workout recovery and anti-inflammation and, and, and helping people maintain their skeletal muscle mass, those are all good uh, use cases. Okay, Charles, what's the one thing that everyone should know about NR that they may not realize? That um, NR is the biggest piece of NAD that you get when you eat cellular stuff. Like if you're eating liver or some really healthy foods, you're getting NAD coenzymes that are being broken down into NR in your meal. Great. And how would you describe uh, NAD plus's role in aging in one word? Essential. What's the most exciting research happening in NAD science at the moment? Probably wound healing, um, anti-inflammation, and uh, maintenance of uh, cognitive capabilities. What's the one common myth about NAD plus or NR that you'd like to clear up? That they that NAD boosting fundamentally runs through the sirtuin system. Okay, and what are the key benefits of niagen and NAD plus? Key benefits are maintaining resilience to conditions of metabolic stress. Um, when you walk into a conference room, there may be some percentage of people with flu or coronaviruses. We know, we know they attack the NAD system. We know sunlight attacks the NAD system. So by taking daily NR, you're boosting your resilience against these challenges to NAD. 
So Charles, thank you so much for your time today. It's been wonderful to learn about Chromodex's Niagen and uh, great to be partnering with you guys and really appreciate your time. My pleasure.